comes to a blow, good preparation always begins well before we hit the water's edge. On this occasion, I'm going pike fishing and I'm going to make some rigs. And I'm going to show you that right now. The bits and pieces are in front of me and we'll take a look at those in a moment. But for me personally, the item that I need is a pair of glasses. I can see the sun 93 million miles away, but trying to crimp something, trying to work on pike rigs right in front of my nose, that's where I struggle unless I've got my glasses. In front of me on the table you can see the various items that you need. First of all you need some pike wire. On this occasion I'm using 28 pounds and then I've got a selection of swivels there. I've also got some hooks, crimps and then you will need the tools, some blades to cut the wire and of course some crimping pliers. So very simple, that's all that you need. Let's see how it all fits together to make a complete pike rig. Before we do make a rig though, I would like to issue a word of warning. If you're not experienced at making rigs, I know we all have to start somewhere, but it's good to sit in with someone, we have to get it right. In fact, if you're new to piking, it's probably a, a good idea just to go out and buy some rigs first. And then as your confidence grows, towards pike fishing as a whole, then perhaps have a go. So I think that's important to issue that warning because unlike other fish, you're not leaving maybe one single hook with a, a small amount of mono uh, attached to it. We're talking about wire, trebles, the whole lot. It, it's not an area that we can afford to have a mistake in. I've just taken off about 18 inches of pike wire. And as you can see there, I'm just snipping that off. And then onto that, we take a crimp and we thread that on. And then this would be the top. We will put a swivel through. So we've got a bit of wire there that we can thread the end into the crimp. And this is where the crimping tools are really good. I have used pliers in the past, but you need to be careful because you take, if you can see there, there are ridges in the bottom of the crimping pliers. So we can put that in. Just make sure it's nicely fitted over both, well, both ends, got both pieces of wire inside. And then, nice and firmly, clamp down on it. So as you can see, I've got that crimped. Now what I do then, because we've got a loop there, is I just twist it a few times, like so. And that's going round and round. I'll probably do it a few more times. But that's what we end up with there. So you can see that's nice, nice and neat. And this is the first hook that I'm putting on. So I'm threading that onto the wire and I'm gonna go about, um, just for the sake of this, uh, this film, so it's nice and easy to, uh, to present. I'm just gonna go about four, five inches up and then I'm just gonna thread that through a couple of times like so. You can wrap it around as well. And I'm just going to leave that there. That, that's, that's nice and tight now. See, what, what I do with sometimes is if I don't put that top swivel on first, I've done this just for the sake of the, uh, the film, but I'll take some uh, tubing down and that tubing will fit over there like that. So it, it not only looks neat, but also it means that the wire there fits nice and tight to the hook. But just for the sake of the, uh, the, the filming, you know what I'm doing with that. So that's on there. Put it through three, four times if you like. And then we get the, the bottom hook. I'm using size fours again, just so I can get a, a, good, uh, a good image really for the uh, camera. What we need to do is we need to thread a, a crimp on. And I'm struggling even with my glasses on. <laughs> there we go. Then, just like we did with the swivel, we loop the pike wire through there. Oop. 
so you can see the other end coming out. You don't need to add too much, but just so you know that both ends of the wire, both pieces of wire are in there properly. And then, as before, we get it nice and neat, nice and central in the crimping pliers, press down nice and firm and then again as before we've got our loop there instead of a swivel we've got the bottom hook so we just twist it a few times and that's what we've got and there we have the complete rig from the swivel at the top that's crimped right the way down to the first hook the second hook that of course is crimped there I've been doing these now for many many years I've never had one let me down and I can't stress that enough it's important to get this right but that is how simple it is when we make a pike rig I'm out on the bank and as you can see I'm into a fish been here a couple of hours, the float's gone, I'm now bringing it in and I'm about to net it. As you saw there, the fish on the mat, always have your mat out ready whenever you start pike fishing so you don't need to mess about with things once you've got a fish in the net. And of course, as you also saw there, I've got forceps and side cutters also there on the mat so that I've got them at hand should I need them. Forceps, most of the time you need them to uh, take the hooks out. Side cutters, a bit like an insurance policy really. You have to have them, important part of your armoury if you're a pike angler, but like insurance, you hope that you never have to call upon it. Anyway, the fish is in the net now, resting, no problems at all with it. It's raring to go back, and I'm going to release it back to where it belongs. I'm into my last quarter of an hour now and I'm watching my floats they're bobbing around on the waves not with a pike take so if it stays like it does then I will have had just the one fish and the number of times that I go and I catch just one is quite unbelievable really it really is a, a fine line between success and failure in angling and I use success and failure with inverted commas because ultimately there's no failure and really there's no success either is there it's about enjoying it and I've certainly enjoyed today apart from the fish which obviously is what it's all about I've seen my first oyster catcher of the year it's always good to see them inland and I saw a pair of birds that takes me to 66 for the year I'm a keen birder but I'm not really a twitcher so I don't chase after uh, birds when they appear nothing wrong with that of course but those that I've seen have all been while I've been out fishing so that's actually quite good it shows just what's out there lots of lapwing flocks coming over ranging from three birds I don't know if that constitutes a flock but ranging from three birds to well in excess of 150 so again great to see uh, golden eye and of course as you saw on the footage earlier herons round the nests in fact there's been a steady uh, stream of them uh, in the area with twigs building the nests I just haven't been able to capture them because of the of, of the wind in fact I'm, I'm sheltered a little bit now I've moved back and I'm behind a, a building to keep the wind off me so time to pack away go home and do some work That's me, done, dusted and sorted. As I was packing away, a couple of anglers came past and they said, have you had enough? That 
is a common question that I get asked as I'm putting my gear away. And the answer is always the same. I've never had enough, but I've got other things to do. Anyway, I've got more sessions planned this week for Pike. So check out the written blog to see how I get on. You can find the link here on YouTube in the description box and the comments box as well. And finally, there are share buttons on YouTube and on the blog. So if you like what you see, you like what you read, why not share it? Thanks if you do. And if you're out and about yourself, tight lines.